I'm Dick Hoover uh, of Richard W. Hoover Antique Arms, and I'm here with Ireland here at the Chantilly Show. And by gosh, it is the 28th of uh, July, and we're having the time of our lives, right? And Ireland is, is, is uh, she's dressed in green. Can you imagine that? <laughs> um, I wanted to tell Ireland that I've got, you know, about several banks of swords. Over here we have European small swords. Over here we have uh, Federal and Mexican War era swords. And over there is uh, Civil War and beyond. And I wanted to tell Ireland that, you know, our fellows uh, 200 years ago were fancy guys, state militias, all wanted to look good, okay? And our officers, look at the court. Can you imagine the drinking I have to do to get ready for a show? Our fellows like, for example, swords with eagle columns, right? You can see the eagle right there. Now, what's this, Ireland? What does that look like to you? That's the American eagle, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and over here, you have a collection of arms. You've got flags, you've got spears, you've got cannons, you've got drums, you know. And there's a spear that goes right up through the middle. And what's that? You see that thing on the top of it? Yeah. Do you have any idea what that is? If, if you do, it'll be a miracle, because little folks don't know about this anymore. It's something that little guys knew everything about 150, 200 years ago. This is the Liberty Cap, okay? And it's the hat traditionally worn throughout history by slaves. Have you heard of Spartacus? I don't think so. Have you heard of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Okay, well about 100 years before Christ was born, there was a Greek slave living in Rome. He was a gladiator, a man of the arena. You know what the gladiators did. They, they, they fought in the arena, okay? And he was fed up to hear with what he did. So he led this tremendous slave rebellion in Italy on the, on the boot, right? Scared everybody half to death. And when Spartacus and his boys, they were put down on the slopes of the volcano, Vesuvius, by the Roman general Pompey, by the way, Anyway, before that, when they marched into a town, they went straight to the mint. You know what they do with the mint. That's where they make the money, right? The coins. And they'd make their own money. And just so everybody knew who made the money, bam, right on the coin, bam, they struck a picture of the hat that slaves had to wear in ancient Rome, okay? So that on the street, you would know who was slave and who was free. And this is the hat of Spartacus and his fellows. And we put this all over our swords. Uh, look, here's another one. This is, a, this is a general staff officer's sword of uh, 1834. Look, here's a trophy of, of arms. There are flags, cannon. There's the spear going right up. And do you see the Liberty hat? Okay. We had it all over our swords. And the reason was to remind us that if we did not stay strong militarily, the big slave master was coming back to do a, another job on us. Who do you suppose the big slave master was? Let's say around 1820. King George III of England, right? He was going to turn us into a colony again, right? So we put these. We put these hats all over our swords. There's one. And let's see. There's a pattern of 1840, a militia officer's sword. Look, you see the Liberty hat? Yeah. Right there. Okay. That was to remind us to stay strong militarily. Now, all right, so Ireland, I was saying that you'll find this Liberty hat on not only the swords, but also on the coins of democracies and republics. There, if you look at our early coins, you'll see uh, Liberty, you know, and she's sitting on a, on a chair and she's holding her pipe and she has her Liberty cap on the top of the pipe. Sometimes she's got it on her head. Sometimes she's got it on her head and on the pipe, okay? 
That's to remind us to be strong. The Liberty Cap is a sign of rebellion, of freedom, right? You will never, ever find the Liberty Cap on a sword or a coin or anything that belongs to a monarch. Even that nice old couple, you know, Elizabeth and Philip, you know who they are. The Queen of England, right? And her husband. For them, the Liberty Cap is, what shall I say? It's what, it's what the sign of the cross is to a vampire. You follow me? Because it means the end of their monarchy. Okay? Now, just to show, just to show I'm not fooling around, I do have. Here's a really tattered example of an 1840 model cavalry saber from Mexico. How's your Spanish? Not so good. Okay. What, what letters do you see there? R and M. R, Republica Mexicana, right? Republic of Mexico. And what do you see in between the R and the M? It's the Liberty Cap, okay, because Mexico at this time was and still is a republic, okay? So they had the, the Liberty Cap on many of their swords. How about that? Don't forget the Liberty Cap, okay? And, anyway, Ireland, this little film is being made by an organization called the Company of Military Historians. And it is probably the premier organization for historical arms and armor and uniforms, maybe in the world, you know, for all I know. Certainly in the United States, they have a publication which comes out, you know, summer, winter, uh, fall and spring, okay? And this is the this excellent magazine. You can, you can see these are uniforms from the uh, Mexican War period. Uh, it's just full of wonderful articles. I read it carefully. The, the, the authors are really experts in their, in their field, okay? Just so you know about the company of military historians, about their publication, like now you know about the Liberty Cap, and you also know about the small sword and where it came from. Would you like to say anything? Fun learning all of this. Oh, good. I'm really happy. Thank you both. Okay. Thank you, John. You want another story? Is there time for another one at uh, Richard W. Hoover Antique Arms? Shoot. How are you? Okay, over here. This is a collection. Gosh, I don't want to use the word collection because I'm trying to sell all of this. Um, Here's a Spanish or an Italian rapier, maybe 1680, okay? Um, it's a late rapier. The, the earlier ones had blades maybe that were, you know, almost 50 inches long. Queen Elizabeth of uh, England, you know Queen Elizabeth's big lace collar and the Spanish armada? Okay. She was losing so many gentlemen at court that she made them cut down the lengths of their blades, okay? Well, that began the process of taking these rapiers, which were heavy and long, and streamlining them, making them light and very deadly, okay? And this rapier progressed and became, over the years, lighter and lighter and deadlier and deadlier, until you, you come to the great, great, grandchild of the rapier, which is the small sword. I mean, just feel the difference. Look at this. Okay? And this is the... It's a lot lighter, okay? So this is the, the, the great, great grandchild, the small sword. It's, it's very light. It's not only a, a thrusting weapon, but it's, it's a real slashing weapon. In old London, Okay, in old London, a gentleman had to have maybe four or five or six of these small swords, I mean, to get along. He had to have a, a very substantial one 
for taking to the field on a military campaign, right? This is English about uh, 1760. Um, then we had to have one that was called a mourning sword, where the, where the hilt would have been all black, no decoration, okay? This would have been for solemn occasions, okay? He would have had uh, a small sword, which reflected his hobbies and his interests. I've had them with books, you know, in the, the guard, or mathematical instruments, or engineering instruments, or, or dogs, you know what I mean? Whatever he liked, okay? Um, and he certainly had to have, what shall I say, a man about town sword for social occasions. And you're holding a man about town sword uh, right there with his fine, fine gold work, okay? This was a sword for the boudoir. What's the boudoir? It's the bedroom in French, right? The, the great ladies of uh, London, but especially of Paris, would hold court in their bedrooms, and they'd be propped up on their beds, on pillows, and they'd be surrounded by uh, young men and maybe their sweethearts, and they'd be talking about the great issues of the day, the Enlightenment, you know, Rousseau, and, and so forth. And the young men would wear their men about town swords for the boudoir. Now, have you heard of 1789, the Bastille? Okay, it's when the people of Paris rose up, and about four years later, they, they cut off the head of their king, Louis the Sixteenth. yes. And then they cut off the head of their queen, Marie Antoinette. And then they cut off the heads of about, I don't know, three, four thousand of their close friends. Oh that was the French Revolution, okay? It became very dangerous in Europe, wherever the armies of the French Revolution went, for a young man or anyone to wear this small sword, because it was the mark of a gentleman, of an aristocrat. And so the whole practice just died. Music in there, huh? Yeah. What do you see? Guns, cannon, all that stuff. Thank you, Arlen. You're welcome. And thank you, Richard. Yes, Appreciate sir. it. Always a pleasure. Look at that smile. I love that smile. Wow. I love that smile too, but not quite as much as that one. I know. <laughs>